In this video, I want to take a few minutes to talk about how to create tables using the user interface and code. I've opened up SQL Server Management Studio, and in order to create a table, I need to first have a database. I have a, a database I made from the earlier video, so let me go ahead and open up that. In the tree view, I'll navigate to where the tables are. I have two tables I toss together. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of those. I just highlight the table itself. I hit the delete key and uh, then when the dialog box appears I just say OK. Now to make a new table from the UI I can just go through here and say table, new table. And then when the dialog, excuse me, the designer window opens up I'll go ahead and actually make something that makes more sense. Now um, to do that, let me start off by viewing the properties window. Let's see, where are your properties? It's usually right here at the top. I don't see why it's not showing up. Oh, that's right here at the bottom, excuse me. And the properties window is dockable, which means that you can move it around. Quite often it shows up over here. Um, and so I'll move it there for right now. <clears throat> but if I have it in a different spot, I can move it over here. Or even, well, let me go ahead and use the push pin here to go ahead and fix that view. And I will move this around and make it a tab interface by moving to this area right here and letting go. Now you can see it as a tab. And usually that's how I run my user interface. <clears throat> now from here, I can start making some adjustments. I'm going to make a categories table. And so I will have a category ID. And I'll make it an integer. And I'm not going to allow null values. I'm going to have a category name. And I will make a character data. There's several different types for the character data that you probably want to use is the uh, national Vari um, the variable character type uh, in varchar and 50 is probably good enough uh, if I want to change it, let's say I change it to 100, quite often I do I can just change it right there. I also don't want that to have null values uh, each entry, each row of data needs to have an ID and a name. I'm going to, to select the category name and um, create a primary key constraint on that. That's the proper thing to do. We'll talk more about constraints and primary keys a little bit later. But this is typically how I would make a table in this user interface. Pretty simple. The, um, the database itself can be made up of many different database files. We looked earlier at the data folder. I still have it open here. I don't see it. Let me open it again. There we go. So the, the database file MDF is where this is going to be deposited in, but you actually can't tell it which file that you put the table in. You have to tell it which file group you put the table in. Uh, this is a little confusing, but the idea is that if I had multiple files, now, I'm going to make up um, a silly file. I'll call it AAA uh, file 2. It's not really a file, it's just a text file. But let's say that this was a, a, an actual database file. Then what I could do is I could have two files in the same file uh, primary file group. That would be possible. And of course, you can do some fancy stuff with it. But in general, every database has a single file. And that single file is in the primary file group. And that's what this, this primary is, is saying right here. A little confusing, but that's what it's saying. Okay, so we've got a, so a table. It's going to be called categories. Right now here at the top, you can see it's still called table one. That's uh, how it looks like when you first start it up. It's also got a star indicating we haven't saved our changes. So we need to save our changes. You can use these little floppy disk um, buttons to save your changes. You can save just the thing you're currently working on, save everything. Of course, you can also, um, let's see, 
Is there a save option here? Yeah, under file, save all, or save categories. I typically just use this floppy disk symbol, and now my categories table is created. I can now at this point go ahead and close this user interface down, go to the object explorer tab, and I will, hey, I don't see my table. Well, it turns out that this user interface should be considered a manual refresh. You have to right click and refresh, but then you see it. And if you expand it, you'll see your, your tables. Now, you can also use code to make a new uh, table. I'll just go ahead and use the new query button to create a new um, user interface for me to type in SQL code. This is a little query editing window. And as you saw in the previous video, the command is create table. And then you have to come up with some name. So how about products? Parenthesis, and then the column name, product ID. I'm going to choose integer like I did before, and I'm not going to allow nulls. And that's basically what we did in the user interface, but I'm also going to go ahead and add on the primary key while I'm here. And then a comma, and product name. It's the same thing as, oops, I want to not null here either. It's the same thing as we saw just a few minutes ago, it's just that now I'm writing the code myself. I want to have some kind of way of connecting the two tables together. So I'm going to make another column called category ID that is an integer, and I'll use that column and its data to connect the products table to the categories table. I should end up putting a parenthesis and a semicolon at the end. If you do not in Microsoft SQL Server, it will forgive you. It's not st strictly necessary, but it's concern, considered a best practice to put a semicolon there. For many years, we didn't have that as a, a, a best practice, and so many of us older programmers don't put it there. But uh, I'm trying to change my evil ways and, and trying to put my semicolon there whenever possible. Uh, wish me luck on that. It's taking a long time to, to break my bad habit. But when I'm ready to run the code, I highlight the block of code I want to run. I can right click and execute the code. Once again, I don't see it over here in the database, but that's because this is a manual refresh. So I right click and I refresh off the tables node. It's important to be on the right node when you refresh. But now I can see the products table and I can see the columns inside. So, as you can see, it's pretty easy to create tables in Microsoft SQL Server, either using code or the user interface.